Okay, this is the introductory chapter uh, for business calculus, and I like to start out with my students, making sure they understand uh, the concept. And this may be a little oversimplified for some of you, but I want to make sure that you understand the concept of Cartesian coordinates and a couple of formulas. Um, let's go ahead and just look at the Cartesian coordinate system here. Uh, this coordinate system is basically a grid and this right here, this horizontal line here is what we call the x-axis and then the vertical line is what we call the y-axis. And then where the two axes uh, intersect uh, this point zero zero we call that the origin so that would be the origin now in order to identify a point on here before I start doing this let me just tell you, you you obviously can identify points that are in between the integers but I just used integer numbers here and I think you'll get the point uh, first of all the point right at where the points intersect is just the point zero zero the zero, first zero represents where you travel on the x-axis, which is nowhere. And then the second zero is where you travel on the y-axis, which is uh, nowhere. So that's zero, zero. Let's start f over here to the left. Uh, this point here is the point negative four, negative one, because if you go one, two, three, four units to the left and one unit down, you get negative 4, negative 1. So the x value would be negative and the y value would be negative. This point here, uh, you travel three units to the left, so the x value would be negative 3. And since you don't go up or down to get to this point, the y value would be 0. Uh, this point here would be you travel one unit to the left and two units up. So that would be the point negative 1, 2. This point here, you don't travel left or right at all, so the x value is 0, but you do travel two units up from the origin, so the x value, the y value would be 2. And then this point over here, to get to this point, you travel two units to the right, so x would be 2, and three units up, so y would be 3. And then this last point, you travel 3 to the right, and then you go 3 down, so x is positive 3, and y is negative 3. And obviously you could also plot other points like negative 0.5 and 1.7. See, if you did that, let's see where you'd be. Negative 0.5 would be about right here on the x-axis. And then positive 1.7, you'd have to go up a little more than 1.5. So, so you could estimate where some of these other points are. But, uh, you know, we generally, when we have you graph points on the coordinate system we generally use integer values but just to make sure you understand that there's other values that X and Y can be you know decimals fractions radicals and so forth before I move on let me identify the quadrants here um, this quadrant in the upper right hand corner is actually called quadrant 1 and in quadrant 1 X is positive and Y is positive as you can see by this point as you go counterclockwise around this quadrant in the upper left hand area the x value is negative and the y value is positive as you can see on this point point. and then when you continue going around counterclockwise this quadrant down here the lower left is quadrant three and in this quadrant both x and y will be negative as you can see here both x and y are negative and then finally over here in this quadrant we call this quadrant four and in this quadrant uh, your x is positive, but your y is negative, like we have in this point, 3, negative 3. The Pythagorean theorem says that for a right triangle with hypotenuse c, I changed that, I originally had h, but it didn't match the formula, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, and you have legs a and b, then the Pythagorean theorem says that if you sum the squares of the legs, that equals the square of the hypotenuse. And if that's the case, then the hypotenuse itself, C, would be the square root of the sum of those squares. So basically, here's a right triangle, and 
we'll say this leg is A and this leg is B. Well, the Pythagorean theorem tells us that A squared plus B squared equals X squared. So that means that 6 squared plus 9 squared is X squared. And you can easily figure out that that's just 36 plus 81, which is 117. So X squared is 117, which means X is the positive square root of 117 because X is a distance, so we use the positive square root. And that can be simplified using properties of radicals. That's square root of 9 times 13, which is 3 times the square root of 13. Now, in radical form, that's the exact answer. If you put it in a calculator and get that it's approximately 10.82, that's an approximation. Over here, we're going to say that A is 4. Uh, B is actually going to be the unknown this time, and C is going to be 10. So in this case, we can use the same formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we have 4 squared plus X squared equals 10 squared which would mean 16 plus x squared is 100. Then if you subtract 16 from both sides, you get x squared equals 84. So x would be the square root of 84, which is the square root of 4 times 21, which is the same as 2 times the square root of 21 as the exact answer, and 9.17 would be the approximation to two decimal places. A formula that stems directly from the Pythagorean theorem, I won't go into how it's developed, is the distance formula. If you wanted to find the distance between two points in the Cartesian coordinate system, for instance, if we go up here, if you wanted to find the distance between these two points, 0, 2, and 2, 3, we have a formula for this. Basically, you let x1, y1 be one of the points, and let x2, y2 be the other point. And then the distance is simply the square root of the difference of the x variables squared plus the difference of the y variables squared. So if I wanted to find the distance between 3, negative 5, and 4, 7, then I would take the square root of 4 minus 3 quantity squared plus the square root of 7 minus negative 5 quantity squared. Now remember, 7 minus negative 5 is 7 plus 5, so that's actually going to be 12 squared. So this is going to be 1 squared plus 12 squared, which is 1 plus 144, and that's under the square root, so it's going to be the square root of 145. Now, you can also do it for numbers that are not integers. So here we have, we want the distance between um, the point negative 1.2 and 3.5 and the point 2.7, negative 1.3. So again, we take the x value, the difference of the x values. Um, sorry, that's not x, is it? Uh, we take the difference of the x values, 2.7 minus negative 1.2, and we square that. And then we take the difference of the y values, negative 1.3 minus 3.5, and we square that. And then um, that's going to be 3.9 squared. This is going to be negative 4.8 squared. And so I just grabbed my handy dandy calculator, figure out what 3.9 squared plus negative 4.8 squared is, and I got 38.25. So the distance between those points would be whatever the square root of 38.25 is. This next example, I'm actually going to show you whether or not three points represent a, a right triangle. So we have the point 1, 3, the point 4, 7, and the point negative 1, 5. And so what I want to do is determine if these points form a right triangle. Well, let me give you a visual of this. These are the three points. Here's the point 1, 3. Here's the point 4, 7. It went off the graph. And then here's the point negative 1, 5. Well, you can look at it. It looks like it might be a right triangle, but maybe not. You just hit this, this side right here looks like it might be a right angle. So basically, what I want to do is I want to show you, I want to see if, if I take this leg and square it, and then take this leg and square it, the distance, I mean, is it going to equal the distance of the hypotenuse and square? So if it does equal that, then we have a right triangle. If it doesn't, then it's not a right triangle. Sounds like we've got some sirens going on out there, so they'll be by, pass us by in a minute. 
Uh, okay, I'm safe. They didn't pick me up. All right, so actually, um, from if we want to find the distance from A to B, we just say 4 minus 1 squared plus 7 minus 3 squared using the distance formula. And I get the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is square root of 25, which is 5. If I want to find the distance from A to C, I can take um, minus 1 minus 1 squared, so that's minus 2 squared. And then 5 minus 3 squared, so that's going to be 2 squared. So that's going to give me square root of 4 plus 4, which is square root of 8. And then if I want the distance from B to C, I go minus 1 minus 4 is negative 5 squared. 5 minus 7 is negative 2 squared. So that's going to be the square root of 25 plus 4, which is square root of 29. Now, if we square 5, we square the short, the, the two short sides are square root of 5 and square root of 8. The long side is square root of 29. So square root of 29 has to be the hypotenuse if there's going to be one. So take 5 squared plus the square root of 8 squared. Well, that's going to be 25. This is going to equal 8, and 25 plus 8 equals 33. So that's what we have on the left. But if we square the right, we're going to get 29. So since 33 does not equal 29, then we don't have a right triangle. There's two other applications here that you can look at that have to do with um, the Pythagorean theorem. So the first example gives you a TV set with a width of 24 and a height of 26, and you need to find the diagonal. Well, if you'll notice, this bottom half is a right triangle, so you can use the Pythagorean theorem, x squared equals 26 squared plus 24 squared, and then you can solve for x. So I'll let you finish that. The second example gives you the diagonal, and then it um, gives you one of the sides, and you have to find the other side. So here you can just take x squared plus 20 squared equal 26 squared, and then you can eventually solve that for x squared equals 26 squared minus 20 squared. So that's going to be like 276, and then you take the square root of 276 to get your answer. I want to finish up with the midpoint formula. If you want to find the midpoint between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, all you do, you have to get the x value of the midpoint, and you have to get the y value of the midpoint. And all you do is average the x values, average the y values, and that gives you your x and y value. So for instance, if I wanted to find the midpoint between the point 3, negative 5, and 4, negative 7, I would add 3 plus 4, then divide by 2, and that would give me an x value of 7 halves. And then if I did negative 5 plus negative 7, uh, and then divide that by 2, I get negative 6. So that would give me the midpoint. So the midpoint would be the point 7 halves negative 6. Uh, here's another one. You just add the x values to get the midpoint. 1 plus negative 3 over 2, that's negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. And then 8 plus 0 over 2 would be 4. So the midpoint would be negative 1, 4. And to finish up this section, let's look at uh, an example where the year 2000, we have a revenue of 500000 And then in 2008, we have a revenue of 800000 And it wants to know the revenue, uh, if it follows this trend, what's the revenue at the end of 2004? Well, since 2004 is exactly halfway between 2008 and, 2000, and the year 2000, we can just find the midpoint. Well, we already know the midpoint is 2004, but let's go ahead and do it. 2000 plus 2008 divided by 2 gives me the year 2004. And then for the revenue, 500,000 plus 800,000 divided by 2 gives me 650,000. So the revenue expected uh, year 2004 is 650,000. And we'll move on to graphs in the next section.